is you want to um, look at your object, right? You just want to just look at it from different angles, take stock of what you've got. As you can see, there's not much to this, right? It's a very simple shape. Um, you've got, you can almost see the, the single block of, of wood that, that was used to, to make this thing, okay? Um, and yes, somebody drew little people on there. Please don't do that. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll try to ignore that. All right, so you can see this was basically a block of wood, and they just kind of scooped out that part and then that part and then added the wheels on. So we will be using a combination of additive and subtractive uh, methods of drawing. If you don't remember what those are, remember additive means you are adding, you're building one part and then adding another part on top of it. Subtractive means you make the whole block at once and then start taking out the sections that you need to. But we're going to do both. So we're going to draw our box, and then we need to look at the shape that we have, this kind of the, the side view, and see this basic kind of a truck shape. And that's what we're going to project onto the side, and then draw through the form and that's kind of what it's going to kind of give us our shape. So I'm going to set this up here. Remember to set your object at a nice three-quarter view, kind of like that. Remember, you want to be seeing three sides, front, top, and this side here. That's what a three-quarter view is. All right, so any good isometric drawing is going to be from that angle, pretty much. All right, so just like we always do, we're going to start off with our anchor line, and I'm starting it pretty close to the bottom of the page because I want to account for the length of the object. And you're just going to draw a box um, that um, you feel is in the correct scale and proportion to your object. So I've got a very kind of skinny, kind of longish, rectangular cube that I'm seeing, so that's what I'm going to draw. Something along those lines. Okay? Remember, you want all those opposing edges to be parallel along each axis. So everything going this way is parallel with each other, everything going that way is parallel with each other, and everything going up and down is parallel. All right, so now we're going to draw the height of our box. We don't need to go up too terribly high on this. I'd say about there is good. And when you make the top of your box, of course, it's going to be parallel with the bottom. All right, so there we go. And again, my, my, my mark making is very loose and sketchy. That's fine. When you're starting out, it can be a little light. And if you find that your box is not quite the right proportions, like it needs to be a little shorter, a little thinner, that's okay, right? This is a, a guessing kind of a process. You're just estimating. So if you need to make, if you don't get the box exactly right when you sketch it out, don't worry about it. Just erase it, make, make the, any necessary fixes, and you're fine. Okay, once you get the box drawn, again, refer back to your object again. And, again, look at this flat shape here, right? This is what you want to project onto this front side of the box. 
So, I am just going to mark off a few edges like this. Something in that neighborhood. So I'm just subdividing the box into that shape. Now some of these other ones that, that I did are a lot more complex. Like you've got this one that I did last period. This one that I did earlier. Okay. So this one's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's just like that. Once you have that basic silhouette sketched out, next step is going to be projecting through, drawing through the form to the backside. But when you do it, you just got to remember to make those lines parallel with everything else. All right, if they're not parallel, it's going to look really bad. Once you do that, now you're going to draw this same shape that you did on the front. You're going to draw it on the back side. But you're going to use these lines as sort of a to help you. Even on the back side, like this this edge here, I can't see that edge. It's covered. But I'm going to draw it anyway because Remember, I am when, when you're doing a drawing like this, you are you are studying the structure. You're doing an analysis of the structure, the volumetric structure of this object. So you are trying to sketch where all the parts come together, where they connect. So even if you can't see something on the backside, you still need to draw it. So now I've got this shape on both sides of my box. Next step is the wheels now. So let's again refer back to our object. And we've got four wheels, front and rear. We want to look at the center of the wheel and go up from the center. Okay, and if I measure from the center and, and kind of draw a straight line, straight up through that wheel, I'm going to see the center lining up with about right there on the car. And the front wheel is going to come right up almost in the middle of the windshield right there. So, on my drawing then, I am going to draw a line and a dot that corresponds with both of those locations. There and there. And just to make sure that they line up properly, I can very faintly draw a parallel line parallel with, you know, the rest of the box. And I can see that, in fact, those two line up pretty well. So now, I want, remember we talked last week about ellipses, but before you draw the ellipse, you've got to draw the square around it. So around each of these points, I'm going to draw a square but not just any square. It has to be parallel to the larger box. I always see, and I've said this, I've been saying this all day, I always see kids, when they draw this, you know, they've got their, their box going, everything looks fine, and then suddenly when it comes time to draw the wheels, they're doing this. 
It's like, what? No. <laughs> These boxes have to be parallel with everything else. They have to go along with it. You can't just draw a random square, right? It looks like a, you know, a caveman car or something. All right. So please keep that in mind. And, you know, look at the object, right? That's going to really determine how big your wheel should be, right? I mean, they're not terribly big wheels. So the top of the wheel should, you know, come up about two thirds of the way up, up to the car. So that's kind of what I have here. And then again, you, use your uh, use your pencil for measurement if you need to, and line up and say, okay, if my front wheel is there, then the bottom of the wheel should be about there. And just make sure that you're drawing it in such a way that this dot is in the center. And, you know, if you, if you were to draw a line to there, it should, you know, line up. Okay? Now, we want to draw through to the other side. All right? Again, even though these are four separate independent wheels, they are lined up in such a way that we can visualize, like, each of these wheels is being like one long cylinder, right? Going through the entire thing. So just imagine that's like one whole cylinder and then you just kind of chop off the ends. So we're gonna continue being parallel and draw through to the back side of our box. Keep all these lines along this axis parallel with each other. And then when you get to the back edge, go up. And that's gonna represent the inside of the wheel on the opposite side. So you should wind up with two Rec long rectangles that are going through the form going this way, right? Now what we want to do is draw, we're essentially like, imagine this is like a stick of butter and we're just slicing off a pad of butter from, from this, okay? We want to draw another square behind this one. So we've got two overlapping squares. Right at that back edge. On the back side, we want to extend this out a little bit and then draw another square behind this one. Because this is going to represent the outside of the wheel. Okay? So now basically what we've done is, is we've created the bounding squares, the bounding boxes for our four wheels. So now the next step is to subdivide, which we already know how to do. Again, keep those subdivisions parallel where appropriate. And then you want to subdivide along that back square as well. You also want the center to line up. So draw a parallel line from to that center. That should wind up in the center of this box. Okay. 
Okay. Now we can do our ellipses. Remember, you want a nice, smooth ellipse. And you want it to fill out the entire box. You do not want an ellipse like this, where you're drawing your square, you're subdividing it, and then for some reason people just do that. Like, no, <laughs> no, make it go to the edge. The, just It's just touching the edge of the box along those four points. It needs to fill out the entire thing, okay? And while we're on the subject, an ellipse should be a nice, smooth oval. It should not be a football. It should not be some odd-shaped lump. It shouldn't be like, you know, a hot dog. It, it, it needs to be a nice, smooth ellipse. And if you have done this correctly, you should be able to draw two identical or close to identical ellipses on the front and the back. Now, yes, it it is a little tricky. You've got all these overlapping lines here. Sometimes it can be hard to see what you're supposed to be drawing, which is why concentration and focus are really important. You cannot draw effectively if you are talking with your friends, messing around on your phone, or otherwise being distracted. Okay, and then you just connect the edges. So you've got those overlapping ellipses that represent the front and the back of each wheel.